Hello, I'm Jolyon Rubinstein. I've come up from London to Manchester, which is in the north of England, where all the poor people live. I'm with a black man uh, here. And, and what are you doing here today? Um, just showing that we really don't support privatisation of our education. So this is really sort of just furthers the narrative that you're jealous of people who are white, who have good jobs. As you can see as we go along, there are some gingers, a couple of blacks and a couple of single mothers. It literally is Enoch Powell's nightmare. Now there's a university in Manchester called MMU, where 40% of the students who study there will face their um, grants being scrapped. But is the cream not just going to rise to the top anyway? People should be able to um, achieve their full potential. And as long as they're rich. That, when that happens, all of society benefits. So we've just got to the Ring of Steel and thank God it's here. As you can see, metal fences, concrete barricades and wrought iron ropes. The situation is a lot, lot worse than we thought. There are men dressed as bees, people in wheelchairs and there are even some Muslims here. There's a line of disabled people threatening the police with their wheelchairs, being very, very clear that if they move out of the way, they will push them into their feet and potentially scuff their shoes. Officer, has there been any scuffing of shoes so far? Anything at all. As you can see, the people in wheelchairs have scared the police settlers with noise like that. It's horrendous. Up on the rooftops, a pair of military trained police snipers. That's not a fact, that's something I've made up, which is something people in the media like to do a lot. But when you see this bunch of uh, lunatic left wingers, you know that they really pose a clear and present threat and justify the hundreds and hundreds of pounds they're being paid while disabled people's benefits are being cut. It's right, it's fair, and it's what a blue England looks like. By 2020, the police have to have a 20% cut in their wages, 20% more efficiency, and have to let 20% more Tories in. There goes one, there goes another, and frankly, there's another. Would you mind if I just walk in here? Just no, I, I you won't can't walk in without a pass, mate. I can't walk. I've got a lot of passes. Yeah, we need the conference. Well, I'm white. I'm middle class. I've got a pretty good bank account. Um, sometimes I go to Wimbledon, and I live in London, which basically makes me a Tory, doesn't it? No. Well, as you can see, a hugely diverse group of white middle class people being white and middle class. Do you have any opinion on, to, on why people are protesting at all? Do you know why? Think, um, everyone has a right to protest, but Absolutely. I think it's, it's more the tone of it's being, it's of it. you know, people it's having the a tone. I'd like to no know one, if no people are working minds. or not, really, because we're paying for their oh, benefit. Right. Now, even though this is a satirical piece, we've got some actually interesting people here. There's an immense sense of kind of being left behind, not part of the national conversation. There has to be reform to welfare. I am personally very worried about the details and I can understand why people are angry. If you have any indicator of social distress, it's on the rise in contemporary Britain. It's not a question of putting people off university. It never does that. What it's a question of uh, is actually saddling people with debts and with costs uh, that will almost negate the point of going to university. The flow of resources to those who need it is slowing down or being cut off. As a member of the media, I thought it was important not to break the unwritten rule that if they're in wheelchairs, you do not interview them, because their opinion doesn't matter.